today we are going to have two leading experts uh, uh, giving their expert uh, uh, talks for the next one hour so no this uh, session uh, no ict academy has uh, been conducting for the last 15 to 20 days uh, with an objective to support the academic fertility specifically the educators in you know getting uh, relevant knowledge and you know information from policy makers industry experts and you know even uh, uh, you know entrepreneurs to understand what would be the post covid scenario mostly and uh, you know we had multiple themes running in the last uh, two seasons i mean three seasons first season was on technology second was on the future is here now and then we had leading the VUCA world and now we are talking about specifically the future of education, employment and entrepreneurship. Uh, opening uh, keynote, uh, I am sure now whoever is in North India will definitely know about uh, Professor P.V. Sharma. He is the current Vice Chancellor of the Amiti uh, University Gurgaon, uh, Gurugram and uh, he is also the President of uh, Association of Indian Universities. He is a visionary educationist and uh, he is the founder, vice chancellor of the India's uh, leading uh, technological university, which is DTU, the Delhi Technological University. And you no, know, he's a senior most academician and veteran in this uh, area. Uh, and he's a doctorate from University of Birmingham. And uh, he taught in IIT Delhi. And he was a former director of prestigious uh, DCE. And you no, know, he's been president of uh, AIU earlier also. So I think you know more than everything, he's been a teacher. He loves teaching and know his passion is towards developing the academic fertility of our India, thereby developing the you know, uh, nation uh, know, as a whole. So with this, let me first request uh, Professor P.B. Sharma to go ahead and deliver the opening keynote on the future of education. Namaskar. It's a great privilege and honor to be connected to you, all my viewers on the ICT Sky Campus portal. And I'm particularly thankful to ICT for thinking of me for this very important webinar today. Today is also the Buddha Purnima, the day of enlightenment of Lord Buddha. And therefore, it is a day which should give us a renewed mindset to understand what is the future of higher education now that we are confronted with a major disruption that has been caused by the prolonged isolation caused by the pandemic coronavirus problem. And it is for this reason, it would be important for us to understand that the major disruption which was earlier taking place on the soft floors in the manufacturing industries has now come to higher education and to all sectors of economic development. Education right from school level to higher education in the university is directly impacted and influenced by the new, new normal, which has now become a mandate for each one of us. I am talking to you from Amity University Gurugram, but from my own residence, because we all are working from home. And it is this new normal working from home for which an extensive training has been provided by God Almighty because of the prolonged lockdown that has given us reason to understand how do we go about now recharting the future of higher education. Before I give my concrete thoughts in this respect, I thought let me go in the reverse order because in this webinar, we are looking at the future of higher education, future of employment and future of enterprise and entrepreneurship development. Let's look at the future of employment tomorrow. The major disruption that has been caused in all sectors of economy, industries included, would compel us to now rethink that the future of job is being redefined, not just for industry 4.0 as I thought earlier, but for all sectors of industries and economy development. We would be now entering into a new era where we have to now think that the future of employment would depend upon now the new normal that will compel us to work partly from home and partly from our office. There would be now new times in which we will enter from 2020 and 2021, whereby maybe the industry would also look into 
keeping 30 to 40 percent of their workforce operating from their home and likewise the corporates and all offices also in it industry of course in a more fortunate position than others but i'm pretty sure almost all sectors of the industry would be now looking at two categories of manpower they would like to take on board those who would be mandatory available and their presence would be mandated in their physically in the industry and corporate and those who would be working from home and therefore the future of employment will compel us now to understand how do we work as a remote team from our offices and work in a collaborative manner to to provide the best of our services and performance to the industry and corporate which we join and therefore the capabilities of the kind with the workforce requires for tomorrow's world in my position my opinion would be very different than the capabilities we were creating till yesterday and these capabilities would require the capability to self-learn capability to adopt new technologies capabilities of effective communication in a team and that to a remotely distributed team. My own son, who is running a software industry, was telling me that while for professors like you, it's much easier to say that you can work from home. But in IT industry also, when someone is just in front of you or within your office, you can very quickly attend to what he had developed and guide him and mentor him. Now he has to have extensive conference calls and to mentor his team which is at the remote places so these are the compulsions of the new workforce which we have to keep in mind while redesigning rebooting our higher education in the right earnest to create the capabilities of the kind that are required in the industries of tomorrow this is aspect number one the second point is about entrepreneurship and enterprise development we have been excited a lot about IoT, big data analytics, and the advancement that is taking place on robotics and automation, on machine learning, on artificial intelligence, and a whole lot of developments that we are being powered by the power of mind and the power of innovative genius of young people around the world who were moving mountains on the strength of the power of connectivity, power of network, and power of information and communication technology, which we are creating a new world in which we were finding that the human beings are being rapidly uh, replaced by their robotic co-workers who could even give a chase to human beings and say that I'm more intelligent than you because a robot is interconnected to the global knowledge network much better than I and you are. I have to go to Wikipedia to find something about an individual or an organization while the robots are talking to each other like two routers are talking to each other without you knowing it and their capabilities of, of intelligence could be multifold now that we are in the era of artificial intelligence and machine learning and therefore that was challenge of one kind but then the we must also realize that industry 4.0 is only one aspect for a country like India, which has 1.33 billion people, uh, such a large population, which comprises to about 17% of the world population, where young people themselves are of the order of 666 million below the age of 25. We have to relook our economic developments and developmental models for a country like India. Alongside with Industry 4.0, we will have to look at what we earlier called the third industrial revolution, where mass entrepreneurship, where creation of millions and millions of jobs at a small, small level of enterprise throughout the country, including in the rural area, would become a new normal for the development of enterprises and entrepreneurship tomorrow. And therefore, the future of entrepreneurship, in my opinion, lies in two parts. The first part will belong to high technology areas, which will be aligned towards Industry 4.0 today, and maybe Industry 5.0 of tomorrow, and maybe Industry 10.0 in not so far a future, but also industry 3.0, which will be powered by mass entrepreneurship of the kind which Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation, talked about when he talked about Gram Swaraj. He was of the opinion that we can go back and make our villages smart enough to engage 
almost everybody, including young and old, in highly productive employment then and there. And that way we can stop the mad rush of population moving away from the rural areas, from the villages to the cities to create mega slums of the kind which we have created on the strength of centralized mass production kind of developmental industrial development which we called in the previous century. And therefore, I think that this is the right time to reinvent the future of entrepreneurship and enterprise development from the point of view of a balanced mix of third industrial revolution as well as industry 4.0. This is one thought I wanted to present before you. Having said this now, let's come back now to the future of higher education. How do I go about creating the workforce of tomorrow, which will be required for industry 4.0 as well as for the third industrial revolution? And how do I go about creating mass entrepreneurship on the strength of education, which I provide in colleges and universities and schools? and centers of excellence, which I have plenty in my country. This is, in fact, the agenda. My own judgment is that during the prolonged lockdown of coronavirus for last 42 days, it has given us every reason to believe that we could do much better and 10 times better than what we were doing otherwise from our cozy classrooms and the laboratories, which we were using for imparting education to our students. Today, the power of digital learning, the power of online learning, the power of self-learning, utilizing the enormous resources which we have on the net easily available and accessible to one and all, no matter where you are or when you want to access them and for what purpose you want to access because of this freely available connectivity and network for millions and billions of people around the world, a new normal has been created in the higher education as well as education sector at all levels. Children at a school level at primary are attending online classes these days and so, uh, so is the case with the online learning that is taking place in the universities, including Amity University Gurgram, where I am the vice chancellor, correct? Currently, being the past president of AIU, I am also aware that my fellow vice chancellors and their learned faculty members and deans are putting their best foot forward to create and meet the new challenges which have been caused by the isolation created by coronavirus. Our universities are closed, but our work is continuing and it is continuing better than what it was earlier. And therefore, the future of higher education, in my, edu in my view, would greet and meet the challenges and respond with tremendous amount of enthusiasm and interest in taking on board the digital learning of the kind and the opportunities it has opened for all those who are in the world of learning. But then conducting online classes is not a very difficult option. What is important, of course, is that can you improve the quality of teaching learning environment beyond what we were doing in the normal classrooms. And that is, in fact, is the agenda. And my opinion, it can be done. And we have to now be highly innovative in our approach. We have to take industry on board. We have to take experts on board. We have to take eminent people on board who are available within the country as well as abroad and connect them to the live classrooms when we are de delivering education to our students. And this is much easier on the online portal than it was earlier. Earlier, I had to invite somebody from Delhi. He will come to my university and almost waste half a day in traveling uh, and 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 delivering a lecture for one hour. Today, he could be connected by a press of a button and as per his convenience, he can come in in between the lecture being delivered in the live classroom, utilizing the online portals. And it is this kind of environment that will promote collaborative learning. It will promote team learning. It will promote an environment. And I submit with all humility to all my learned teachers and deans and professors who must be watching this webinar of ICT Sky Campus that in tomorrow's world of learning, teachers have to learn from students. Students have to learn from their learned teachers. And don't be shy enough to learn from your teachers, from your students. Students must not be shy enough to learn from their peer groups and teachers 
and together we have to learn a lot from the expert from the industry industry has to learn a lot from the learned professors as well as young aspirant students and it is this environment of collaborative learning that is something we wish to promote we need to promote in order to secure a bright future for higher education in our country here in india india is in a highly fortunate position because the excitement for learning excitement for studies excitement for science and technology pursuits and excitement for use of technology is something to be seen and we have seen this with the explosion of use of ict for social media and these days we are seeing the use of ict for creating a learning environment hundreds and thousands of webinars have been mounted throughout the country by all universities and learned organizations ICT included, ICT academy included, whereby we are trying to now understand that in this globally connected world, how the world of learning could in fact unfold the infinite capabilities of utilizing connectivity for a good cause and that is to maximize learning and connecting people through the collaborative learning and participative learning. But we need to, as I said, very clearly understand that in this learning environment, we have to learn from each other. We are in a new age where each one of us, including the senior most vice chancellor of the country, would say that I know something, but I do not know everything. And because everybody knows something and no one knows everything, it's all the more important that the future of education, especially future of higher education, submits to the requirement of collaborative learning, participative learning, learning from everybody, including your grandchild, if that is so. In fact, my grandson was here a couple of minutes ago to set up this webinar for me. He is still in class six. He has just gone to class six now. And the young man is able to do a tremendous amount of service for me and I learn from him a lot. Likewise, the learning will have no end. In our Vedic uh, traditions also, we have said very clearly that the wise thoughts and words of wisdom coming even from a, a small creature like parrot must be taken seriously, while the, the nonsense being talked about by the most high profile person must be rejected. This is what we have said in the Vedas to safeguard that the learning must proceed from the pedestals of pedestals of wisdom, no matter what age you are and what level of hierarchy you are. And therefore, in this uh, very important uh, new age of learning, one important aspect we should not forget that the learning is not merely to know or to become enlightened, but we must have capabilities to ensure that we understand the importance of learning to do. And learning to do requires tremendous amount of working by your own hands for design, for analysis, for development, and also for creating new systems and putting together and integrating a whole lot of uh, uh, subsystems and all that comes by learning to do. And therefore, in higher education, through the new modes of connectivity and digital learning, we have to facilitate a lot of time for our student to on minor projects and major projects and real life problem solving so that we are able to develop the problem solving capabilities in them. Last but not the least, this is also very important for us to understand that universities are not merely in the business of learning. They are in the business of creating new knowledge and creating new technologies, rolling out new sciences. And these developments in science technology should propel the new wave of development of industries and enterprises. And therefore, knowledge creation, technology incubation, translation of ideas to viable innovative products, patenting of the ideas, creating tremendous amount of IPR strength for the university and for the country is also a very important agenda, which we have to take note of. We can facilitate this in this new world in which we will be entering after the unlockdown of COVID-19, which will be rolled out from the, I'm hoping from the 15th of May onward or thereafter, that we have to now submit how we can maximize knowledge creation, maximize IPR creation and facilitate 
the growth of idea into startups and new enterprises within our own university. In Amity University, we are very much conscious of this aspect. And I'm very happy that even during the lockdown period, my faculty and student community have filed not less than 15 patents and have published something like 35 to 40 high impact factor publication during this period. They have also submitted not less than 75 new pro project proposals for funding and they have received six proposals for funding amounting to something like two and a half crores of rupee and each one of us therefore are stretching beyond our limits of time not only to provide an excellent learning environment for our student but also to engage seriously to utilize our power of mind and the tremendous amount of intuitive power which we have to create new knowledge new technology and to come out with innovative products of the kind with the world of work would require tomorrow. So having said this, let me finish by saying that in this new era, there is one more requirement which I and you have to now reinstate rather overstate. We have now learned that livelihood is important, but perhaps most important is also saving our own life and our well-being. And therefore, the focus of higher education cannot really be limited to either learning or creating new knowledge or new technologies. We have to create human beings of the kind which the world will be proud of. I want to create responsible global citizenship from the campuses of our universities. And it is this aspect that requires focus on cultivating and nurturing human values in our student community as well as all those who are associated in this world of learning in the university. This is an agenda where we have to provide a space for well understanding how do we go about ensuring a happy and healthy life for each one of us. So well-being will overscore now on top of the agenda of our concern and care for career, which was predominant earlier. Let the well-being, respect for life, care for life, and of course, concern for our career and our contributions to the humanity at large be the agenda for higher education. I have every reason to believe that now that the world has realized that the power of mind and power of connectivity coupled with the tremendous amount of the wisdom that exists in the humanity at large would give us strength to create new environment, a new age in which we would be able to assure a very bright future for higher education, create mass entrepreneurship in abundance, and to ensure that billions and billions of people around the world have productive employment in their hands. And also together, we will move the mountains and make Mother India proud of our contributions, which we shall make from our university campuses. With these thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, let me thank ICT Academy once again, and to Mr. Suresh for giving me this opportunity to be with you. Uh, on this very important occasion when we are seriously re-examining how do we go about creating a bright future for higher entrepreneurship <laughs> as well as relook at the employment and respond with tremendous amount of enthusiasm, interest and commitment to create a better world than the world that exists today. With these thoughts, thank you. Thank you. So it much was really wonderful and inspiring. Thanks a lot. In fact, many of them had said, no, it is more than an educator, this is very much inspiring for teachers like us. That's a message many of them have said. I will just pick up one or two questions. We request your brief answer, sir. So do you do you foresee the role of teacher would change? Will teacher, uh, uh, no, will, 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 will the scope of teacher go down post COVID? Uh, not at all. Not at all. This is a country which has the highest respect for teacher. Whereby, in fact, we say Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, you would remain relevant to the community. But as I said, try to understand that in this new age, we have to learn from each other. Let the Guru not be seen merely as a sage on a stage and come and deliver the Sermon on Mount. Let him go on the stage and say that I am here with open mind and open arms to embrace the very best of knowledge which is present in this room and through the connected community which is around and I am mean, that is the kind of openness of mind which I require from my learned teachers and let me submit with all humanity in this UAH only those teachers who will learn from each other who will learn from their students who will learn from the industry and together they will make the whole world 
enlightened and and glorious they will survive they will be the guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara and those who think that they are already the sages and they have nothing to learn they will not have any place whatsoever in the world of learning in the world of education in the world of higher education thank you sir thank you thank you thank you so much for your uh, you know, uh, message to teachers i think you know that's the key you know end of the day you know, all teachers are worried on that and you know i am not say worried you no know, there is a kind of uh, volatility in the thoughts so one last yes. question do you think uh, even a rural most student will get enough and equal opportunity in the digital era yes he would because really speaking i was looking at the figures and facts although there is some concern that the connectivity level in the rural areas of the order of 18 to 20% as against very high in the urban areas but the power of connectivity is such that through the smartphones almost everybody is connected but i think let me leave you with this thought that the policy makers and planners of our country must now invest more money on connectivity on facilitating the rural area to be connected with same amount of eagerness on internet as be in the rural in the urban area i do and by doing this i tell you we'll create india of our dream where every nook and corner of the country will be connected once we do it for connectivity there is also an agenda to do it for energy also let the solar energy go to every nook and corner of my country and empower my nation with abundance of energy on the strength of new solar energy and solar wind hybrid so that we are in a position to say that connectivity is powered by the power of energy as well as the power of internet these are the two basic uh, goals which policy makers must now take seriously more investment is required and let those who are providing service also make connectivity cheaper and data especially use of data cheaper let them not school you with blood by saying that now we are using webinar and video and therefore i will charge you more on the uh, on the package for the data let them facilitate this and in turn they will get the reward with the increased layers of economic development in my to be shared thank you sir thanks a lot uh, for your you uh, know uh, answers and uh, definitely your session is one of the most inspiring session for the entire educator community on behalf of ict academy and the entire educator community let me thank you for being with us and you no know, delivering such a passionate presentation at this uh, situation which is which is more important for us thank you very much